Hi everyone, in this video I just want to explain the intuition about why ketchup might occur. And I'll go ahead and use Japan and the United States as my example, since I talked about them in the previous example. Well, let's consider the case of um, two countries that are alike in every single respect, except they just have different capital labor ratios. In other words, they have more or less the same technology, more or less the same quality of government institutions, social institutions, climate, geography, all of that stuff is more or less the same. Skill level of the workers are about the same. The only thing that's really different is one country has a higher capital labor ratio than the others. So let's call this the United States in 1960 had a high capital labor ratio. So then you go all the way up here to the production function and over and you'll get real GDP per worker hour. In other words, labor productivity in the United States was also high. Okay? And as a result, since labor productivity is a key determinant of the standard of living, or real GDP per capita, real GDP per capita is also high. Now, if you've got two countries that are alike in every respect, except one has a lower capital labor ratio, then that means they're on exactly the same production function. That turns out to be a key point. So remember here, I'm assuming everything that shifts the production function, skill level of workforce, technology, all that stuff is exactly the same in every country, or in these two countries. So we'll call this the capital labor ratio in Japan, and you can pretend this is Japan in 1960. All right. Now, <coughs> as a result, Japan has a lower level of labor productivity and a lower standard of living than the United States. All right. So what's going to end up happening over time? Well, it turns out the principle of diminishing marginal returns is going to be a key part to the story. So let's actually take a look and remember um, the marginal product of capital is just the slope of the production function at the relevant point. So let's just call this point A. And you've got a relatively steep, uh, you know, a relatively steep part of the production function, so the marginal product of capital is high. But for the United States, you're on a relatively flat part of the production function, so the marginal product of capital is relatively low. As a result, and let me just go ahead and erase some things here so I have some room to write, we've got the marginal product of capital for, and I'll just put Japan, J for Japan, is greater than the marginal product of capital for the U.S. Now, if you remember, capital, or the marginal product of capital, is the rate of return to capital. So it's essentially the profit rate. That means if you're um, a firm, what country are you going to want to locate in? J the United States or Japan? Well, it turns out, since we assume firms are greedy profit-maximizing firms, they're going to want to locate in Japan. So Japan is going, going to accumulate a lot of capital. And so that's what was happening in Japan after World War II, and really on up until almost the present. They were accumulating lots of capital. As a result, the capital labor ratio in Japan is going to start to rise. And it's going to start to rise towards that of the United States. And as the capital labor ratio rises, you move up along the production function. Okay? Now, and as you're moving up along the production function, labor productivity and hence the standard of living is going to rise. Well, when is this going to stop? Well, it's going to stop. You think about it, this story started because the marginal product of capital in Japan is greater than the marginal product of capital in the U.S., and therefore firms have an incentive to go ahead and locate in Japan. Well, this is only going to stop when the two marginal products of capital are equal. So marginal product of capital prime in Japan is greater than, it was not greater than, excuse me, is exactly equal to the marginal product of capital in the U.S. Well, when's that going to happen? when Japan moves all the way up to point B. In other words, Japan's at point C, which just happens to be the same as point B, because they're exactly the same, they have exactly the same marginal products of capital, and so firms no longer have an incentive to locate in Japan rather than the U.S. As a result, while this is happening, Japan is quote-unquote catching up. This is the catch-up. Japan is catching up to the United States. So you can actually think of growth is driven by two things. So let me go ahead and erase all this. You can think of growth is just driven by two factors. It's sort of normal growth plus catch-up. Okay. 
So think of normal growth as that's the, just the growth that's occurring because there's improvements in technology and things like that. And we can pretend for the sake of argument that's the same for all countries because technology flows freely across all countries. You know, if one country gets iPods, you know, other countries get iPods relatively soon. If one country gets the internet and computers, other countries get it relatively soon. Right? But, so Japan and the United States were both experiencing this normal rate of growth. What was different is Japan was accumulating a lot of, cat, uh, of capital, therefore it was experiencing a lot of catch-up growth. Therefore, it was growing more rapidly than the United States. All right? So what you had is that prediction I mentioned in the previous video. The low standard of living in Japan led to a higher marginal product of capital, which led to subsequent fast growth from 1960 to 2012. Okay? And that's why we think the phenomenon of catch-up might exist. In the next video, I'll talk about why um, some countries might experience catch-up and others won't.